Hello everyone, welcome to this online course on optical communications. My name is Pradeep Kumar K and I am a faculty at the Department of Electrical Engineering. I am also associated with Center for Lasers and Photonics at IIT Kanpur. This course on optical communications, I would like to give you a brief introduction as to the importance of optical communications in today's context to point to you what are the topics that the course would cover and also suggest to you some textbooks during the introduction video. If you look at the growing traffic trend as estimated by Cisco networks in the year 2014, you would see here that the traffic has been increasing quite a bit and it is expected to exceed 2 zettabytes per month by the year 2019. This report on traffic trend was given by Cisco in the last year or in the last couple of years and it shows that the traffic is expected to exceed 2 zettabytes. Just to put that number 2 zettabytes per month in context, 1 zettabyte allows you to store 1 trillion that is 1000 billion movies each if you assume that they are digitized at 1 gigabytes that is if each movie occupies 1 gigabyte then you can store 1 trillion movies in non HD format. Of course, this 1 trillion can come down a bit depending on whether you your each movie would be more than 1 GB, but this is roughly the ballpark number. If you look at the context of internet growth in India, you would see that it started off with a very small value in the kilobytes in the early 90s and then it has been increasing to such an extent that it is now expected to exceed 2 exabytes per month. So, this is the traffic for India and India is one of the fastest growing markets for internet and IP traffic. Now, if you ask what does it take to communicate at such high data rates and presumably over a large area co connecting continents across continents, you would actually realize that there are three main factors that in today's context communication becomes important. One is that you are looking at long distance communication because users are connected across continents. Then they are looking at high data rates because users want data without delay and in order to provide that one, one has to have high data rate and kind of an instantaneous or with a very small amount of delay you want the data to be delivered to the users. Communication channel in order to have high data rates must have a large bandwidth. Large bandwidth allows you to communicate at very high data rates and the traditional solutions which are no longer used such as copper cables or even things such as satellite communications cannot support data at such data rates that is at gigabits per second. For long distance communication where users are connected across continents communication channel must have low loss otherwise data would deteriorate over a distance and then it would be necessary to regenerate that data and that would cost money and infrastructure. On the other hand, the last few years or probably the last uh, one and a half decade, what has it uh, made communication in a different paradigm is mobile communication that is users not only want data now, but users want data on the go. So, you are moving, you are carrying your smartphone and then on the smartphone you want to watch a movie. However, such communication is again not possible over uh, free space channel or air. This mobile communication at high data rates also requires a high speed wired backbone network which would connect all the stations and towers. So, stations and towers are connected by a high speed wired backbone. If you now ask what technology can accomplish all these goals that is long distance communication with low loss, large data rate communication because of high bandwidth, the only technology that addresses except for the mobile part, the only technology that addresses these issues is optical communications. And you can see the current status or a status about a year ago that people have demonstrated 1 terabits per channel communication over optical fibers and this is something that no other communication technology can achieve or that can deliver such high data rates, such low losses. Optical communications was made possible by two seminal discoveries. One was junction lasers which would operate at the room temperature. This happened in the year 1970. Similarly, silica glass was manufactured with attenuation that was less than 20 dB per kilometer, the so called barrier of 20 dB per kilometer. This was again made possible in 1970. These two seminal simultaneous discoveries have allowed optical communications to go from few kilobits per second in the early 70s to now terabits per second. 
So, optical fiber communications again would not be possible without lasers or optical fibers. Today, high data rate communication is enabled by two other technologies coherent detection and digital signal processing. In fact, the importance of optical fiber communications was recognized by Nobel committee and the Nobel prize for 2009 was awarded to one of the Nobel laureates for his work on optical fiber communication. This is Charles Cow. Today, this is the structure of optical fiber communication. You have data, data is mapped using some modulation technology. It is then up converted to the optical domain by mixing it with the laser and then this passes through channel. You do certain operations in the channel itself and then at the receiver, you incorporate a local oscillator, detect the data coherently, digitize the detected data and then perform some signal processing operations to recover your data back. The key technologies that are helping fiber optic communication today are spectrally efficient modulation. You want to conserve your bandwidth, forward error correction, digital signal processing and to top it all a performance monitoring. So, studying optical communications can be thought of at three different layers. One is a functional layer, physical realization and performance assessment. In the functional layer, you are interested in the input output relationship for the physical realization. You want to understand how optical components such as modulators, filters, amplifiers can be physically realized and then you want to assess the performance by looking at the actual devices in the optical link and this course teaches you all three layers. We begin with functional, we go to physical realization and then we also assess the performance of these optical components. What background is required for the course? Analog and digital communication fundamentals, uh, knowledge of electromagnetics is required. However, knowledge of optics is not required. We will develop that during the course and a little bit of signal processing fundamentals is required. Some of these things will be reviewed during the course itself. The course plan would begin with optical fiber communications giving you an overview, talking about line coding, pulse shaping, analog modulation, digital modulation. We also cover optical transmitters, optical receivers such as photo detectors. We cover lasers, optical amplifiers, optical fiber modes, some WDM components, signal processing in optical communications. The primary textbook for the course is optical fiber communications by Kaiser and this is available as a paperback edition in India. The other textbook for the course is Fiber Optic Communications by Shiva Kumar and M. J. Dean. This is not unfortunately available in India. So, I look forward for your enrollment and continuous interaction for this course on optical communications. Thank you very much.